Kyoto. It's definitely visits to some shrines. Kyoto lights up at night where a lot of people go to visit the temples and shrines and make a you know a whole gathering in the nighttime with lots of beautiful lights, so I've heard. Uh, we are also gonna look to go to a monkey park which is near a bamboo forest. That's more on the outskirts of Kyoto, so we'll have to bus over there. Um, we only have two nights in Kyoto thus far. We may have to extend to be determined, I suppose. Um, so yeah, monkey park, tea ceremony, would love to do that. Although I'm worried they may be very booked. Okay, so we had to go to the monkey park last minute. We thought we weren't going to be able to get in. Last entry is 4 p.m. and the park <laughs> closes at 4.30. It takes apparently 20 to 30 minutes to get up to the monkeys and it is 3.58 right now. So <laughs> basically we get to sprint up this hill, see the monkeys for like two minutes and then we have to go down. We didn't know that it was closing. Sweat, baby, sex is a Texas drought Me and you do the kind of stuff that only Prince would sing about So put your hands down my pants And I'll bet you feel nuts Yes, I'm Cisco, yes, I'm Ebert And you're getting two thumbs up You've had enough of two-hand touch You want it rough, you're out of bounds I want you smothered, want you covered Like my Waffle House hash browns Coming quicker than FedEx, never reaching apex Just like Google Cola stock, you are inclined to make me rise an hour early Just like daylight savings time The ladies are all getting their makeovers, taking pictures in their traditional garbs. And then there's us. We look fly as fuck. I got my Hakone shirt on. Because we went to Yamana Hotel. Here's a geish. Say hi to the geish looking off to the side in a very humble, unsuspecting manner. These are little monkeys. Those are called fish monkeys. And why are they called fish monkeys, Chase, as opposed to just monkeys? It's called Darwinism. <laughs> Elaborate. I don't know, you made up the definition. I know, I just wanted you to say it. For, com for comprehension's sake. Uh, huh. So, Professor, Professor Zach's theory is that since Nipponite, Nipponites, Japanese people, are eat a lot of fish in their diet. They do eat a lot of fish. Sushi, raw fish, tamago kake gohan fishy, sardini flakies, you know, whatever. But, oh, there's the Japanese national team. Rugby mm -hmm. store. So. I guess I'll pick it up where he left off. 
because the Japanese people are isolationists for millennia and eat a ton of fish, well, we know that our bodily structure is the case that you are what you eat. Right? Is it not the case? You are what that you is eat? What the case Someone is. has to fact check me on that. Yeah, that's the case. Okay, you are what you eat. Therefore, since the Japanese people eat so much fish, that's why they look like fish. And they do kind of look like fish. Someone fact check me on that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fact checking it right there. Okay, they do kind of they look like fish. And that's because they've been eating so much fish for generations. And that's why they're the fish people. Right. So when I look around in a big city center like Tokyo or uh, Osaka, Osaka, and I walk around, I feel I'm among the fish people because they all look like fish, right? So what do you do with that, so what do you do with that information? So going back to the original point, we need to give this guy a glass. Yeah, that's a good idea. Here you go, sir. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so, right, so now that we've established that they are the fish people, hence why, hence for, hitherto, why the little Japanese boy dressed up as a monkey is called as a fish monkey. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think that was good comprehension. As opposed to just the one. I think that was good good stuff. Well, I had to pick up about eighty percent of it, but eighty percent. I'll assume that you knew what I was talking about. Let's go to a main street where you can see more fish people. Hello, fishies. So Chase is going to try to hit some coins in the proper bowls to gain enlightenment. Here, hold on, I gotta get you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you tossing ones or like, because we don't have all that money? Okay, dude, that sucks. You should try. All right, watch. We ran out of ones. Hold on, I'll gain enlightenment. But you have to record while I gain enlightenment. Yeah, here's a one. Hold on. So I just hit in those cups. Take a 10 for the boys. Yeah, yeah. I'll nail the 10s. Oh, oh, let me get a 100. For the no. Where it's a good offering. It's a good offering. It's my money. It's my money. What? 100. For, for the enlightenment. Alright, hold on. Oh, watch out. The school boys are going for it. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Bro, you're fucked. The whole school is behind us now. There is a mob! Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, I don't get a good view of you yet. How am I ever gonna be enlightened with all these Oh, a little hard. Yeah, dude, it's hard. My tank, my tank. Oh! Hey! Off the top, off the top. Dude, you went off the top. Uh. Okay, now I have to go for the second one. This is for an, this is for the double enlightenment. This is for the bodhisattva folks, for the bodhisattva. Oh, close one. Is this your last one? This is my last one for bodhisattva status. Here we go. Uh. Close. <laughs> super close, super close. So it looks like he's only a little enlightened. I was enlightenment, it was for coming back down to Bodhisattva. But uh, dude, you hit it off the top and into the bowl. So you see we're stuck in the middle of a mob right now. Wait, that was my 10, right? Or no, that was my one. No, that was a ten. That was a ten. So oh, I no. can give out nine more to other people. So I want to bless. Them. Oh, okay. You gotta hold their hands, though. Okay, I'll bless you, Chase, with enlightenment. I want to bless my father, my mother, my brother. Uh, I want to bless uh, Bruce Fagan, the anesthesiologist who <laughs> created NFL. <laughs> um, 
I want to bless Tyler the Moose Einwechter. Good old Canadian boy. How many more enlightenments do I have to give? I think you have three more. Three more to give out? Okay, yeah, I want to give Cherish. I'll give Cherish two because he really needs <laughs> Cherish, you got two of them, so don't mess up. Um, and you're for your last enlightenment? For my last enlightenment? Kola ah. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we're almost outside of and the golden. Nathan Schomer. Nathan Schomer. Oh, for the extra like, one time. The last one. Guys, this is very serious. <laughs> Chase son here. Prostrated. You did it. Back here. Chase prostrated right back there. And what did he prostrate in front of? He <laughs> prostrated there. That is a golden calf. I shouldn't get too close. I'm not going to prostrate or anything. <laughs> but he did. You did too. Here, here. Let me help you out. <laughs> Big Obeiro. Big Obeiro. Can't be doing that, dude. I can't worship a freaking golden calf. Are you retarded? <laughs> Koyasan, a one of a holy pilgrimage site, one of the only two active pilgrim places of active pilgrimage in the world, next to Camino de Santiago, um, and the headquarters of Shingon Buddhism. So we're up in the mountains right now at Koyasan. This is a very holy place in uh, Shingon Buddhism. And there are a lot of festivities here for us. You have the option to stay in one of these traditional temple houses here and join the morning prayers and experience temple life. I don't know if we're quite in the part of the temple district yet, but I'm very much looking forward to our day in Koyasan. A Koyasan. We got a call from our Rabbeinu. We got a call from Rabbeinu. He said, uh, you know, we're uh, suspicious of idol worship happening here in Koyasan. So send in the Jews. Send in the Jews. The uh, judge, jury, and executioner of divine law. Come scout it out. See what you think. Are they guilty? of the most heinous crime in the Torah, idol worship. That's what we're here to find out, folks. And we're gonna let you know pretty soon. Oh no, the bell people are here. Oh shit. Alright, let's just take a little bit. I got you, I got you. Okay, we're gonna be in the tea room. This is might be the first time we get them here, folks. Obviously, you know that all good spies have to walk a thin line. Good spies have to walk a thin line, blending in with their surroundings, but not pushing it as so as to compromise. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have here is pictures from several Buddhas getting increasingly excited. Over in the corner, there we have an idol. We see an idol there. Where, where? Without a doubt, an idol. Where are we looking at? In the right corner. I don't see him. The lifelike figurine of their founding monk. Oh, this guy in the bottom right. You're talking about this guy over here. The thing is. What's the difference between this and a picture of the Rebbe? Do you think that they're just like saying, yo, this is a cool well, that's guy? What you didn't let him finish. So while we do have a figure in here, we don't have 
many figurines and lifelike statues of the rebel, which is a picture. So the pictures of the Buddha are indeed fair game. Now I want to take it a step further, guys. They have to also worship the idols. So just having the idol without it being worshipped could be an idol of historical value. Are they actively worshipping idols? <laughs> That's what we need to figure out. And if so, what is the judgment? I don't know if that necessarily could be complete. I don't know if I fully got it. Chase is unsure if we have the proper evidence. Um, we definitely saw something with our own eyes there. We saw the prayer hands, we didn't see full prostration, but... Mm -hmm. And I also didn't see a lot of attention to the worship. I just saw a very quick acknowledgement. Right. Which could be a paying of respects, as one might do to a picture of the Rebbe. Right. <laughs> so, what we really are looking for is, is honest to God worship of the idol. And once we have that, and we've documented it on camera. Guys, 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 we've got, we've got it happening right here. Some action. Okay. No, but they're chatting just too casually for it to be serious idolatry. Yeah. It's all too casual. But maybe that's their secret. That's how they've been ditching our radars for all these years. We have a full day to corroborate everything, so we have to collect all the different facets of it. They're wearing bells so they don't get lost. I'm not sure if that was enough, folks, but it is supplemental to our case, and it will be pulled out in a court of heavenly law as additional potential evidence once we build a bigger case. I think we did have enough there to put it in the files. Yeah, to put it in the files at least, but... We definitely need some supporting But we don't feel comfortable enough in the evidence we've ascertained up to this mm -hmm. point um, in order to, to win over the jury and, and get the verdict that we're looking for. Not that we're putting any pressure on anyone or accusing anyone of anything. Innocent until proven guilty. Say hi. Ah! <laughs> Camera. What do you got to say, Ma? We found it a lot on film here. A lot on film. But is it enough? It's second hand. This could have been AI generated. This could be AI generated. Well, Chase is gathering tangible evidence. It's gathering real tangible goods here. We have a recording of Buddhists in the act, whatever that act may be. Here you have a Buddhist praying. He's holding the beads. The question is, this is nothing different from standard davening. This is legal davening right now. What are they davening towards? That is the question. That is what all the viewers want to know. That is what the heavenly judges will be looking for. Here we have it. Here we have it again, guys. <sighs> it's not going to be enough. We have a lot of crowns to cover today's speed racer. Let's go get some more of them. Guys, the truth is that um, we don't have anything here. We don't have anything tangible. We have some potentially supplemental evidence if we were to catch the main thing but on this episode season one episode one of idol hunters here's danger my speed racer we'll see you on the next episode he's danger the big bad danger danger the idol hunter <laughs> okay what? I think I see a spirit hovering above your head. Do you see an upside down lava? It's over there? following you. You guys see it? Do you? I think you can get it on camera. Is it hmm. a nice one? I don't know. He's just observing you. He's just hovering above. Oh, that's nice.
that when my face feels so itchy? Yeah, that's why you kept itching your face. Checks out. Are you gonna kiss him or what? Little Buddha. So you basically get the gist of it, but uh, <laughs> pilgrims come here to Koyasan for this place, for this holy sanctuary where Kukai's spirit rests in eternal meditation. And he is resting here. In eternal meditation. That is true. Should we try and interview these pilgrims? And as great as Kukai is, as great as the Buddha is, nothing comes close to the Lord God, the Lord God, Hashem Elohim, which is back to the original mission, what we were here for, to expose idol worship. Oh, oh here we go. Here we go. Let's talk to the real pilgrims and see if they're going to prostrate before a golden calf. Oh, they're yeah, speaking so Japanese. Japanese. They're the real deal. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, that guy's, that guy's alive. That's a live Buddha. He's much cooler than a dead one. and um, <laughs> pampering. It's called idle pampering. That's what's happening over there is idle pampering. No fault. So the idle pampering is happening. The worship is happening. The prayers are being sung. And there you have it, folks. Season 1, Episode 2, Idle Hunters. I'm Speed Racer. And I'm Danger. And this case is closed. Is closed. Mm, yummy, yummy. <laughs> We're here in Yerushalayim, Japan. In the holy city. No, this is where Arushiyama, Arushiyama, yeah. which is a cute district slash suburb of Kyoto that we came to visit earlier, as you saw in the, uh, Monkey, Park episode. the Monkey Park episode, and we decided to stay here for a night, so we got a really cool hostel, and right next door to this hostel is this even cooler, izakaya, sit on the floor kind of place. And uh, Chase ordered the fucking kitchen sink. <laughs> we were gonna go in an onsen right after, but I explained it's not a good idea. But we're doing it. Arigato gozaimasu. Mm. This is the boiled soup. It's the boiled rice soup. And we're sitting on the floor. I'm quite limber, so this is good for me. Oh. The fish is really good as always. As the fish is good as always, except for that one place in the Kyoto market. Yeah, that's my one one time, but that's okay. Can confirm. Quite delicious. We don't really have many videos of us dining or eating. We've been pretty good about just kind of putting it away and enjoying the food. Yeah. But here I thought we might share a few bites together with our Sure. Family. I'm eating the broiled salmon rice soup right now. 
with the Fukaki seaweed. Stolen, a little seaweedy for me, but I like it still. Uh, I've never had rice and soup before. Mm. Yeah, it's a good thing for a, for a cold day. I've got the same thing going on over here. And we're just getting started here, folks. We've got about like eight more orders coming our way. <laughs> okay, you guys. So the point is that in Japan, people eat a fuck ton of fish. They're always consuming that <laughs> shit. We saw the tuna market, they ate salmon, sashimi, sushi. It's the birthplace of sushi, if you didn't know where sushi came from. So the point is they love that shit. And over generations, Japan's an isolationist culture. And so, you know, they've been eating a lot of sushi here for a very long time. We don't know how many years. I could say even hundreds of thousands of years, if you will permit me to. So basically what happens is you are what you eat. Meaning that the food that you eat is broken down and assimilated into your own genetic structure. Therefore, Japanese people are like fish people. They're the fish people. And that's why they kind of look like fish. Oh, well, you think about it. So we're among the fish people right now. Fish person, fish person, not fish people. Fish person, fish people everywhere. See the fish people? So, yeah, when a little boy, when a little boy, do you want me to zoom in on fishies? Mm. Hey, fishy, one, fishy, fishy. The fruit for giving us a really good look. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fish person. So the point is that when a young Japanese boy dresses in a little monkey costume, he's a fish monkey. It's not just a monkey; he's a fish monkey. So that's why they're the fish people. Good morning, hustlers. It is a beautiful day here in the suburbs of Kyoto. Chase is out for a whiskey brewery, not tour, but just to see it. A whiskey brewery visitation. And I have just left the hostel and I'm in short sleeves today, uh, mainly because I have to wash all my clothing. But also, it's 9.45 a.m., 55 degrees, not too windy. Ain't nothing a Northern Californian can't handle. <laughs> um, no, actually, it feels nice. It's very sunny. Let's go into a little cafe here. But really, this is what it's all about for me. Forget the pagodas. Forget the temples. Woo! I mean, this isn't what you would consider a spectacular view, but as I was saying, this is what it's all about for me. This is the small town casual stroll on a something morning, Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, birds chirping, people going to work, feeling like you almost live here, almost. I believe they're calling it hot girl walks nowadays, which came to my attention uh, via some chick on Hinge, Caroline. Cheers to you if we ever meet up, if we ever have children one day. <laughs> and so besides that, uh, we'll now be taking questions from the fans, from the commenters. Okay, Beanie Boy 451 says, what is your favorite part of Japan that you've seen thus far? Thank you, Beanie Boy 451. Um, you know, Kyoto is probably my favorite city, but you can't really beat the views of Yamana Hotelu. Uh, I mean, it's obviously a bit more ritzy, not just on, you know, anyone's travel list. We did that intentionally. We've been staying in hostels otherwise, but, uh, so city, I'll say Kyoto, um, and place overall is just Lake Ashi overlooking Fuji. You really can't beat that. Okay, thank you. So next question. Um, of all the girls you've met on this trip, girls bar or otherwise, which one was your favorite? Thank you for that question, Samurai Senpai 00. Um, of all the girls that we've met on this trip, 
which one was my favorite? That is really good question, Samurai Senpai. Um, I would have to say, wow, I really don't want to leave anyone out here. You know, there were some that were just in kawaii's in passing, right? Like you didn't actually get to interact with them. Some were just kawaii's in passing that we didn't really get to interact with. So I'll keep it to the ones that we actually chatted with. Um, you know, while the easy answer would be Katie Terry, no, no min two. Um, I think Yayo, simply because of the time that we spent with her and she like kept face washing me which at first bothered me but now I kind of miss it <laughs> I wish she would give me a face wash again yeah yo if you're watching this yeah she was cool she like guided us around and stuff she was like holding Chase and I's hands like walking us to the taxi and stuff and just uh, a very nurturing woman which she really loved to see so again again all right I gotta say ma samurai senpai for that question all right, I'm gonna uh, fuck off into this cafe here, I think. Oh, is that the cafe? No, that's a hair bar. Either way, I'm gonna fuck off into a cafe now. So I'll see you guys after I fuck the fuck off. So do you wanna <coughs> read them off the screen, starting here from the first one from uh, Cream Pie Kawaii? Oh yeah, Cream Pie Kawaii asked 24 minutes ago, out of all the sushi places uh, that you ate at, what was your favorite sushi spot? a good question cream pie thank you very much for that um, do you want to answer first sure so so we had some really great sushi experiences but I mean I'm not gonna give runner-up or anything I'm just gonna go straight shot number one straight shot number one sushi that we had for me I, I personally am gonna go with the breakfast sushi at Toyosu fish market I mean nothing hits better than 7 8 a.m. sushi tuna right from the docks literally it was super fresh, super intimate, I mean, so I'm going to go with Toyosu Fish Market Breakfast Sushi. Wow. Thank you for the answer. question, Cream Pie. Um, you know, it's hard for me to even think about which is my favorite sushi. We've had so much sushi on this trip. <laughs> um, you know, omakase with Mimoto-san uh, in Tokyo obviously stands out as our first omakase. Um, so I did really like the ambiance in the environment, which, you know, in sushi culture obviously goes a long way. And, you know, I can't disagree with Chase what he said about, um, you know, the fish market sushi. Obviously, cream pie, you understand that. But um, the thing is that we had monkfish liver and grilled, just uh, seared otoro with from Mimoto-san that was so good and we had I never had anything like that before so simply for the uniqueness and the ambiance and the first omakase I'll go with that great I'm just want to give a shot of these red leaves are really hitting right here you want to read the get, next get question the onsens. sure okay so nuke Nagasaki 050 says what is your least favorite thing about Japanese culture? Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question, Nuke Nagasaki 050. Um, I can see where you're coming from, given the username and the question. Um, <laughs> are you perhaps Korean? Um, <laughs> least favorite thing about Japanese culture? Chase, anything come to mind to you? Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to. Uh echo what Rabenu of Kobe Osaka said I, I don't my least favorite thing is I guess the shyness of maybe some of the people um, the overly overly insular as, aspect of it but you don't really see that as a tourist here but you can get, get sometimes get the vibe but I guess it's good and bad but I mean not a not a terrible thing but I mean it'd be fun to shoot the shit with some Japanese people but uh, I get it, they're scared of the COVID, they got all the masks on, uh, they live on an island, so I would go with the, the shy, isolationist nature of, of some of the characters. Right now, that's how long I've been on you. Working hard and make us better, do it faster, I'm makes us stronger. <laughs> I need you right now, boss tonight. You could be my black cake moss tonight. Play secretary, I'm the boss tonight. And you don't give a fuck what they say, alright? 
awesome the Christian Christian Dior. Damn, they don't make them like this anymore. I, <laughs> I'm not sure. Do anybody make real shit anymore? Bow in the presence of greatness. Last words. Well, I'm very happy with our Japan experience. Yeah, we did a lot of things in a good amount of time. I uh, wouldn't want to do it with anyone else. We uh, ripped this shit right off the bat from <laughs> Kabukicho. Yeah, we did. A um, lot of fun entertainment things, spiritual things, good conversations all throughout, mm -hmm. cultural observations, a lot of walking. Yeah. That's but what that's what it's all about. <laughs> And so as this chapter comes to a close, I can say that I have no regrets about my time in Japan. Yes, sir. Oh, watch out. We're about to get hit. <laughs> so that's it. And hope you all enjoyed yes, we'll this see episode. You. We'll see you uh, see again, on, hopefully soon. On the next adventure, Bezrat Hashem, very, very, very soon, immediately with the coming of Moshiach. Amen.